Alright, ready? One, two, go ahead. What is up, gems? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Jerexa, aka Gem, aka your favorite hype girl with a camera. Um, I know, why aren't I in my office? Because I'm in my mobile office. I'm getting better at these to-do lists and sticking to them. And I have to be out of the house for a while today. And on my list was to record the intro of this video. So I was like, you know what? I have about 15 minutes before I have to move on to my next, my next task of the day. So I was like, let's just take a couple seconds and record the intro. This is part two of my interview with Wild Child Photography. I hoped you guys enjoyed last week's part one. If you didn't, you're gonna wanna check it out. Like I said last week, her energy, we've already been in the talks about doing another one because I just feel like we just have a lot to say and we just didn't have enough time for this episode. Um, for anyone who hasn't watched part one and you were just like, I'm just gonna go on to part two, um, Wild Child Photography, her name is Genesis and she's located in New Mexico. She is a family and wedding portrait photographer and I believe she just started doing boudoir. So I hope you guys enjoy this video with me and Wild Child Photography part two. Like when people, when I meet new people and they're like, so what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a wedding photographer. I can't stand when the response is, so what's your real job? I'm sorry, oh I make real God. money. <laughs> You're like, I make good money. <laughs> what I'm saying, like, um, it takes you one month to make what I can make in one wedding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, they don't think of it like that. And I'm just like, who says that kind of when what is your real job like yeah. <laughs> you know what honestly I've I've noticed that those people are really jealous of people who get to be creative their whole life you know like or they don't have the drive to do it you know because it's not easy like there's people who are like oh it's easy to be a photographer and just press yeah. a button like it's really oh. not <laughs> like right well at the beginning so I had a friend um, had a friend and she was always talking crap like oh all these mom togs and you know they they're just moms with cameras and just because you have a nice camera doesn't mean you're a photographer so I guess that stuck in my head a little bit and yeah. I was just like you know what maybe I am just a mom with the camera but after a while like I got into it and I learned and honestly like did it you know so I'm like no it's not you can become more than a mom with a camera but you're not just a mom with a camera you know I had to stop kind of letting other things influence my life and like my choices because I I would still like you and my family they're like well are you gonna go back to school and I'm like well no probably not and but doing school with her during the pandemic was just terrible. It was so terrible. Oh, I, I had to be breastfeeding her while I was like muted on zoom with the, my camera off, like trying to listen. Um, I had to put her cartoons on while I was trying to do homework. Like it was a lot. And my hormones and my ADHD was all jacked up from her. So I was like, yeah, let's not. Um, so honestly, I found photography when I was like, just not having a good time with school you know what I mean that is so like yeah that. hearing from my family like oh are you gonna go back to school or do you think you're gonna go back to school or uh what do you plan on doing now and honestly like I have to give them some slack because I did jump around with what I wanted to do a lot like like I said I had a roll business I had a bow business I had like I've tried everything to have my own business um so I just, you know, so they're like, okay, well, when is she going to jump ship to the next thing? So they were all like little side hustles, really. So in San Antonio, I was going into school. I was working and then I had the role business on the side. Um, and it was during the holidays. So I was doing all of that plus planning my wedding. So wow. yeah. It was a lot. I, I don't know. I like to torture myself with extra, extra work. Oh, why <laughs> so, do we do so, that? <laughs> it's so much better than being like 
bored because I hate being bored. I can't, I can't stand it. So I like pack myself with everything instead. And then I'm just sitting there like <laughs> stressed. <laughs> Do you suffer? So oh, I was really doing quick, that one. Really quick before we go on any, if there's anything that we say that you're like, hey, I'm not comfortable with putting that out there please ask me to cut it out. Cause the question I want to ask you, I'm like, I don't know if she's going to get uncomfortable. Do you suffer from depression? Cause I suffer from depression. And that's one of the things that we just, we max out our day. So we don't have time to like really think about this stuff. Yes. No, I'm completely comfortable with all this because okay. honestly, more people need to know about it. Yes. Because, thank you. <clears throat> like they do, because especially with business and being a mom and and being a business owner and oh everything else like it's hard honestly it's super hard for me whenever I get into those depressed modes to even post on social media I hate oh. it I hate having to do reels I hate having to do stories and Instagram in general like I just dove into Instagram because I was mainly on Facebook so it was less <laughs> yeah. um and then when I started to go more to Instagram it was like everything changed you need to do videos you need to do this you need to shoot face and I've always hated how I looked honestly until lately so I was like I'm not doing that um but no depression and ADHD uh it's a ongoing cycle yeah. here and it, it's it's not easy and you literally have to just like push past it and do your thing you know that's what I'm saying. Like being it, it a gets photographer hard. is like, okay, all you do is press a button. No, 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 no. In, in this, mm -hmm. like in 2023, when you're a photographer, you also have to be a content creator. You go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, you have to show your face. It is so much more than just clicking a picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Accounting, marketing, advertising, TikTok. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's honestly like, so with the whole likes and follows thing, that's super easy to feel depressed about because, you know, oh, how come they're getting booked or how come they're getting all these likes and I'm doing the same thing they're doing. Why are they, you know, it's the whole comparison thing. And I think that's the worst part of social media, but honestly, you can't do a business now without social media. So it's kind of like, you just have to, yeah, you have to really be comfortable with yourself and what you're doing in order to do it because then you're just not gonna it's not gonna work out because then like you like I said you're gonna get depressed and then you're not gonna want to do it so they go real hand in hand and I you know I've had depression because I was way younger so and I you know you know you learn how to kind of cope with it or kind of work with it or work around it I guess um after I had her my hormones were all kinds of crazy so my ADHD got worse and then that made me super overwhelmed, super like just overstimulated. depressed. Yeah. So yeah, I was way overstimulated and even sometimes still I get overstimulated and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to go. And honestly, photography started turning into like my, my time away. So I would go do a session. So that was my time to get out of the house away from my kid which I love her to death but oh my god some days you just need to get away from your kids yeah. <laughs> um so if people are like I want to be with my kid 24 7 they're a liar <laughs> okay because <laughs> you're lying you break. so literally it, it became my break from being a mom and being a wife and being a stay-at-home mom and all that good stuff so it was kind of like I was able to be my creative self and I'm very social. I'm a very social person. So whenever we moved here and didn't know anybody and then the pandemic happened, it was just oh. like, I'm so alone. You know what I mean? So I kind of had to drag myself out of it and go do sessions so I would get out of my depressed, my depressed hole because like, I'll just sit there and I'll spiral. I'll sit there and I'll spiral. And it's so bad. But. Same please. I right before we got on here, yeah. I looked at your Instagram story and you hopped on and you were like, Hey, sorry, I haven't been on. I haven't like showed my face in a while. And I was like, I wonder if she went through an episode because that's how I am. Like, I will literally, you won't hear from you, you'll either hear from me every day for two weeks and then you won't hear anything from uh -huh. me. Like, I won't post, I won't go on the stories. And it's just because I'm going through <laughs> an episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you just kind of have to like, 
and I saw a post, I don't remember from who, but it was like, it's okay to take breaks. Like, it's okay. You don't need to be on here every single day. And I was like, you know what? That's true. Because it's, there's a lot, like you, you can't make yourself be there every single day. You know, as a business owner, you probably like respond to clients all hours of the day. Right. I saw your post where you were like, you made a list for yourself. Like today I'm going to get this done. You know what I mean? And I love that because it's like, I don't, I don't give myself a list and then I try to do everything and then I fail at something and then I just get depressed. Forget it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And so you're like, well, if I didn't get all of this done, I failed today. You know what I mean? But if you break it down, it's like, oh, that's manageable. You know, my brain can see, oh, there's five things on there. That's not that bad. Oh my gosh. You know, I need to do that still. (laughs) I listened to a podcast yesterday. She said, break it into two lists. Do three things that you have to do. And then three things you would like to do. So like, for instance, you have to make the bed, you have to brush your teeth, you have to drink water. Cool. If you get those three things done, it makes you feel good about yourself. You're like, okay, I got these done. And then you go to the wants uh-huh. and you're like, okay, I would like to go get my nails done, but I'm also not going to get upset with myself if I don't get it done because I got these three things done. You know what I'm saying? You kind of like yeah. play a mind game with yourself. <laughs> Yeah, you have to trick yourself into like, oh, I'm doing a good job. I'm not failing. <laughs> and my thing is like, I'll do a list and then I'll lose the list. And then oh, I'll yeah. Like, That's why I put like, it on well, I don't know where my list went. <laughs> That's why I put it on Instagram. There you go. Because I'm holding myself accountable, but then everybody who viewed that is also holding me accountable. That's why I put it on Instagram. Yeah. Like, <laughs> If I tell myself I that I have to do this stuff, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to make sure everybody knows that these are the things that I have to get done today. <laughs> They're the, like, did you do those things? Like, I might have done half of those things. <laughs> For real. It's I love that. Up out there. Really quick, before we do the dropping the gem segment, how how do you, when it's time to edit, what is your, like, do you have to have a candle lit? Do you have to have music playing? Like, what's your thing to get in the zone when it comes to editing? Honestly, I'm not picky. <laughs> um, I do a lot of my editing after my daughter goes to bed. Okay. Um, because then I could just be by myself. My husband's asleep. My daughter's asleep. Nobody's asking me questions. Nobody's bugging me. I'm just, I'm good, you know? Yes. Um, so honestly, nothing really. I just get on my computer and start going but I did notice that I have to edit a session from start to finish oh or my edits are all kinds of funky so yeah because my edits will change it'll I don't know some will look more green some will look more pink and I'm like what in the world so I have to sit down and edit a whole session where I'm going back and re-editing my session prior so wow I really don't really have like a sometimes Like like I'll sit on my couch You don't have like an actual like thing, but you do know like, all right, if we're going to sit and edit, we're going to finish this whole session. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I don't want to edit if I'm like back and forth, you know, going and going and coming back Um, because yeah, it'll change. And then I, like I said, I'll log back on to edit again and then I'll have to go over everything I just. Um, Okay. So I'm editing this video right now. And I think I can relate to what Genesis is saying here. I got up for two seconds to grab my cell phone stand and you just took over my entire seat. Got it, got it. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Are you gonna move? No, I'm gonna sit on you. Yeah, I just need you to move over. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh no making biscuits on my booty. Sienna, I had to kick her out. She dug her nails in my booty. So I definitely can relate to her saying that she needs to sit down and edit a whole gallery at once, or you come back to it a couple days later. Your creative juices kind of changed and the way you see those photos at that moment are differently. And then you have to take your new way of editing and go back and apply it to all the other editing you did days prior. And then it's like an entire waste of time. 
Okay, I think I've talked enough. Sienna has now found a comfy little space on the floor and let's get back to the interview. We're all in these Facebook groups. So one of the posts that I saw, they gave the client a whole wedding album, online gallery. It was like over 600 photos, good to go. And the person responded with, there's pictures missing. Like, do you have pictures of this? Do you have pictures of that? Do you have pictures of this? My question to you is if- Nova, come here. You do like a session or you do a wedding. If somebody comes back to you after you edited the whole entire gallery and they're like, hey, you don't have this photo. Like, how do you respond to that? So honestly, I've had that happen. I have too. Or they'll ask like, oh, did you get this? And I'm like, but so I've responded like, I will take a look. Um, but if it's, if they keep asking for it, I'd be like, I've gone through this whole gallery, which there was a lot, probably around 3000 pictures. I said, and I've narrowed it down to the best ones that represent my business. And I gave it to you because these are the best ones. Like maybe they had somebody blinking or maybe they had somebody talking or they weren't looking or something, you know? So the reason I picked these ones are because they're good, you know? <laughs> so they're like the best I, I haven't yeah and I was like you know I haven't had anyone really kind of push that after I said that because I've had a client um or two say that and I was like well these are the best ones so just you know kind of trust me but on the other side I kind of get it because whenever I got my wedding pictures like I looked for certain pictures and I was like oh, shit so I asked her like hey do you have these so I was that client too so I understand oh I was too to come <laughs> from like a bad place yeah, I'm like, hey, do you have this one too, you know? But I also was understanding that if she didn't have it, I know what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know somebody blinked. Yeah. I know somebody wasn't looking. I know somebody moved. I know the flash didn't go off. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's like, you can't really tell them that because then they're going to be like, well, you don't know what you're doing. You know what I mean? So or, you kind of have to like go about it gently yeah. but like firmly <laughs> yes I saw somebody comment that they would if they can't find these certain poses that the client's looking for that they'll suggest you know maybe asking around your guests maybe you thought I took the photo but it was actually a photo that somebody took on their phone maybe ask your guests if they maybe got a photo of what you're looking for and I thought that was smart to say because it's true you're taking so many pictures you don't know if the photographer took that or if it was your aunt Sally <laughs> She was crying. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like <laughs> not having attention sometimes. Hey. Oh, we're all the same, baby girl. We are all the same. But that's fine. She came at the right time. We're we're actually done. I thought that was so much fun. Thank you <laughs> so too. much for taking I know. time. I wish we would have had longer, but <laughs> no, but Zoom just be cutting me off. And I don't know if I'm ready to pay for the full version yet. I wouldn't either. Don't worry. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but that's it. Thank you so, 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 so much. And I will talk to you on the grid. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.